Bonjour, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. And no, I'm not tipping too much back. I'm just enjoying Normandy with the cider and the Calvados, the apple liqueurs that are here, and the apple tarts and the seafood and all this great stuff. And the people here are so nice. I mean, I was filming earlier and a guy walks up and gives this to me. Just says, hey, have this. I'm like, oh my God, we love Normandy. It is a fantastic place with tons to see and do. But even places like this where I love the cider and the people and the food, there's things I also don't like. And that's what we have for you today is five things you're gonna love and five things you're gonna hate about visiting Normandy. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you're not gonna like when you come to Normandy is look, there's a lot of guided tours and, and all kinds of things will take you throughout the countryside and do things with you. And but the thing is, there's not a ton of public transport and to go and see some of these places, you really have to have your own transportation. So yes, you need to rent a car when you are here because if you're gonna to go to Mont Saint-Michel and see the most one of the most beautiful places in France, the buses don't actually go very often or at all on Sunday and you wanna get there and get back, you're kind of stuck, limited transportation options. So if you wanna really take it all in and see the beautiful countryside and houses like these and, and the churches and the villages and go to the beaches and stuff like that, you really need to have your own transport. And that's why it's, that's one thing you don't like is you really need to have that own transport. And if you're renting a car here, remember, stick shift okay if you want to have automatic you're going to pay more for it so my american friends learn stick before you come save yourself some money also if you're going to have a big group i mean it's tough to get a big vehicle so you might have to have multiple vehicles okay so that's the first thing you're not going to like you're going to need to have your own transport to get around to all the really cool stuff to see because the countryside here is gorgeous okay now the second thing you might not like about coming to normandy is look if you're not a history buff okay all of the glut of world war ii d-day no battle of normandy museums and memorials can be a bit much what i recommend if you're going to come go to the go to omaha beach go to the visitor center at omaha beach you get the really personal feel of what it's like and what what people went through on d-day and you see the cemetery and those kind of things or you can go to bayo and see or bayou and see the the battle of normandy museum but there's tons there's there's paratrooper museums there's all kinds of stuff out there but it can be a bit much and if you're not a big history buff after one or two of them, you're like, okay, I'm done. And the thing is, it's a very moving experience when you go and see these things. I mean, we all teared up at the cemetery when we saw, heard about those things at the museums and stuff like that. And when you go to the beach, you see that it can be really tear at you. But if you're not a big history buff, it will really start to wear on you after a while. So just know that you want to do your D-Day beaches, spend a day doing those, and then go see other things. Okay? So just know, not a history buff. You're not going to be too thrilled with the D-Day beaches after you know one or two visits of things. Okay? Now, the third thing you might not like when you come here is, look, you got to know the hours and the, the seasonality of this place. If you're coming outside of the summer, a lot of places will be closed for a time in January and February and stuff like that. And also in terms of hours, in terms of, you know, when you want to eat, look, during the afternoon, a lot of the restaurants will actually close or not be serving food, maybe just coffee and stuff like that. So if you think you're going to have dinner at five or six o'clock at night, unless you're in a place like Cannes or Arun or, you know, on floor where there's a ton of tourists or Mont Saint-Michel, you're not going to have a good chance of finding restaurants that are open. They usually open about seven, seven fifteen at night when they are really start to serve food. So the food's great here. Don't worry, but just know those hours can be a bit limited. Sometimes it can be pretty cool. Like in the summer, things open up longer. You know, Mont Saint-Michel from July and August, it's open until midnight. You can go in the Abbey. It was pretty cool. But the hours in general can be a little limited. So make sure you're paying attention when you can go places. When does it open? When does it close? Does it have that midday close? Because some places actually are closed from noon to two and stuff like that. So definitely check out your, your, your timetables, okay? And the thing is that leads into the fourth thing you're not gonna like is with that seasonality, the rush of the crowds in the summer. This is a super popular place for not just French school kids, but also British school kids and other places because they come to learn about the D-Day beaches and the invasion and stuff like that. So it gets packed in here. You go to Mont Saint-Michel any day, and the place is packed. It gets millions of visitors because it's so gorgeous. But the thing is, when you got that one-lane road and getting smushed up here and all those kind of things, it gets very frustrating. So with that lack of lots of public transport and a lot of people coming in, it can be a bit tight, okay? So make sure, again, get your own thing, your own transportation to kind of get around that. But just know, if you're coming to Rune in a high scene, there's going to be a lot of people there. If you're going to Enfleur in the summer, there's going to be a lot of people. So book your accommodation early, okay? And if you can book your transport early, do that as well just to take the headache away because it can be quite uh, tough to do because we've come here in the summer we had a great time we loved it but it was like a lot more people we've come back here again and this time we're here in the spring very few tourists here we're enjoying everything and what you don't realize is normandy is kind of part of that a lot of americans when they do their like their first you know 10 or 12 day two-week trip to france it's like we do paris then we go to normandy then we go to loire valley 
it's part of that little first triangle of France. And so you get a lot of tourists that do come here. So be prepared for that. So have a little bit more patience, okay? When you do come and make sure you're trying to get your own accommodate. Like you can stay in a place like this. I mean, this place is fantastic. We have our own like barn for ourselves and it's just great. You get to have that freedom when you have your own car to go and stay at the rustic countrysides. But just know, tourist crowds in the summer, uh, it's a bit much sometimes. And the fifth thing you might not like when you come here is look, when you think of France, you think of probably the south of France in the summer with those kind of beaches where there's it's so warm and people are in their bikinis enjoying everything. Look, Normandy is northern. It's northern France, man. I mean, you got the, the sea is right out here and we're in the north and it's the Atlantic and it's cold. So yes, here you don't get your super sunny days all the time. It is a chilly, windy experience when you do come here. So if you're going to be coming in the spring, the fall, the winter, even the summer, make sure you have multiple layers to put on. On. If you're going to go out for the day, you're going to go to Mont Saint Michel. You know what? Take a sweatshirt with you or a little ja light jacket with you in the summer, just in case. Because when you come back and the wind starts kicking up, it can cool down really quickly. But I'll be honest, there's not much I don't like about Normandy. This has been a fantastic trip. We're here with my kids and my parents and stuff like that. My dad's wanted to go see the D-Day beaches for years, and he's loved it. I've loved it. The kids have loved the whole thing. Seeing, you know, the Bayou Tabs. I mean, it's just a fantastic place. So the five things we love the most. What are they? Well, let's get started. The first thing you're going to love, this is the one thing I've really loved is when we come to Normandy is you have this rustic beauty. Okay, if you think about it, you know, in France, you have different perceptions of how things are. And this would be the rustic part of France where you have the stone barns and the stone farmhouses and the manor homes. And it's not palaces, it's not chateaus, it's manor homes. It's farming. You see like that, like gritty, you know, like John Wayne version of France. That is Normandy. And what's cool is when you're in Normandy, there's actually, I, I would say it's kind of two parts of it. You, oh, there is actually. But you have like Upper Normandy with Rune and Enfleur. That's like the more polished version of it. And then you have the southern part or the, 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 the lower part where the Mont Saint-Michel is and, and the D-Day beaches and, and Cannes and stuff like that. And you have the, 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 more, the more rustic version of it. And when you go through and you see the countryside and the orchards and the farmhouses, the manor houses and all these things it really takes you back and the thing is you can really see it's like wow this looks like just like it did when i see those world war ii films and then when i see those things the guys walking through i think i saw a picture of this guy a guy at this doorway i mean it's just amazing feel when you hear are here and for all the kind of overrun tourist kind of stuff in paris and all the pomp and circumstance of there this is just really a truly rustic like you feel France in you when you are in Normandy. And that's why I just love this place. That's why it's the first thing of that rustic beauty of Normandy. When you go through the villages and you see these magnificent churches that, you know, they, they, they look so Romanesque and stuff like that. And you're like, man, that's just so, uh, it's just such a great feel when you go through. I mean, I, I can't, I can't deny that I love Normandy. Okay. It's just a fantastic thing. That rustic beauty is number one. Now, the second thing you're gonna love when you come here is going to those D-Day beaches. Now, I, I know I said, you look, it's a glut of the museums and stuff like that, if you're not a history buff, but I'll be honest, you really should go, because you need to know how this history was. And when you come here and you see the museums, you see what people went through, you, they've done such a great job with so many museums, it's easy to find one and to get an idea of what went on that day. And when you go to places, and you go to Omaha Beach and you walk up and we were there at low tide and we can see, man, they had to go from there to the beachfront and you can just see now you watch Private Ryan, Saving Private Ryan, you're like, man, I can see how all those guys just got mowed down. Cause that's, you know, 800 meter run. <clears throat> oh Jesus. I mean, if you don't, if you aren't touched when you go to Omaha beach and you see these things, the, the, the cemeteries and stuff like that, man, there's something wrong with you. You got to know that history about what happened there. That's why I say go to the American cemetery at Omaha beach. Okay. And they have the get visitor center, which tells like the personal side of the people that were killed. You can't not be touched by that, but they've done such a great job of developing everything here. There's tons of tours. So if you don't have your, your own transport, get a tour and have a tour take you to the, to the Omaha and Utah beach and stuff like that. If you're Canadian, go to Juneau beach, sword and gold for our British friends. I mean, there's all kinds of, opportunities out there and it is really a touching thing so that's the second thing you're gonna love is going to the d-day beaches and taking all that in and really learning the history and the stories about the things you'll go to saint maria glees and you'll see a paratrooper on a church what's the story behind that you can learn about that and all kinds of stuff it's just a really moving thing and i really loved it we loved going to the d-day beaches okay now the third thing you're gonna love to do when you go out here is go to the historic cities okay yes you go to mont saint michel the abbey of mont saint, uh, of saint michael you know and it's this island in the middle of the sea and when, when the sea when the sea comes in it's an island when it goes out it's kind of like quicksand going out there but you go there it's one of the most beautiful like photographs you will have in france it's definitely our, our christmas picture for this year like i said and it is gorgeous yes there's tons of crowds there and yes there's overpriced restaurants there but 
when you walk through the streets, you really feel like you've gone back in time. And you can imagine yourself as a pilgrim from a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago coming to this island, going through, and you just, it is just so gorgeous when you go there. And it's just, the history that's there is amazing. But it's not just Mount San Michel. You go to Bayo, you see the Bayo Tapestry, where you can see the Battle of Hastings in 1066 with William the Conqueror becoming the new King of England. It tells the whole story, the whole background of how Edward, you know, the, Edward told Harold that William will be king and Harold's, you know, Harold's trip to Normandy. And you see him in the quicksand by Mount San Michel. And, and then you see how he, he backtracked on his word and the battles and all the stuff. It's so detailed. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a thousand year old tapestry. And you see it, it's 70 meters long. I mean, it's insane. And you see this and it's just gorgeous. And the, the church, the, the Notre Dame Cathedral there, there's a Battle of Normandy Museum there too. That's great. You go to Rune and you go see that in Rune with the cathedral in Rune and the Gros Log, the, the big clock there. Rune is one of our favorite places. We actually tried to move there a few years ago because we loved it so much. And you go there with the Joan of Arc history, that's where she was burned at the stake and you have all those things in Rune. Or you go to Enfleur where, the, where there's all these, uh, the fishing villages or Deauville, where the beach towns, there's so many like little historic towns and bigger historic cities when you go through here. Because yes, you can have the rustic beauty and you can have the refined beauty as well. And it is just such a great thing here in Normandy that you can have both of those kind of, that juxtaposition of the rustic and the refined and the polished. It's just awesome. And with that, you know, the history side of it, you also have the beach and fun side of it. You can go to those fishing villages like Onflow. You go to the beach towns of Deauville and have a nice relaxing vacation and stuff like that. It all kinds of come together with that history and like city side of it as well. Now, the fourth thing you're gonna love when you come here is the cuisine. Yes, French food is fantastic no matter where you are. But the thing is, when you come here, one of the things you gotta have is you're gonna be drinking cider or Calvados, the stronger version of cider, okay? This is the this is the stuff that mommy and daddy drink late night when they're like, oh, I can't take anymore. No, actually you drink this to kind of clean your palate between things. This is fantastic, but you're gonna have cider. Wine is not the big thing here in Normandy. It's cider because of the weather that's here, that chilly weather, the wind and stuff like that. No grapes, not really too many grapes here. You start growing apples and making cider and the cider is great here. And the food that, that comes here, there's a lot of dairy. So you have a lot of, you know, cream with your seafood. Oh man, the scallops here, the oysters, sole, you gotta eat the sole when you're here, that fish is great. And if you have pork, things with cream sauce and stuff like that are just amazing here. And you will love that. And make sure when you go, just ask the waiter, I'm gonna have the menu, the menu, you know, they, they pick different things for the starter, the appetizer, you know, the starter, the main meal, the dessert and stuff like that. Let them pick for you because it is just awesome, okay? And then the sixth thing I'll say is, one thing that's really cool about Normandy is, you know, when you go around France, sometimes you don't speak French, you sometimes get a little bit of like, oh, you don't speak Frenchiness. Here, they're totally cool if you don't speak French. They're like, hey, it's okay. I don't speak English that well. We'll find a way to communicate. And you really do, because the people here really are great. And I guess that's, it's not the, they don't give you a hard time for not speaking very good French here. I think it's the people you're gonna love because the people in Normandy, they are so friendly. They're are so open people will try to help you with things you get lost you're not sure gps isn't helping you ask the farmer down the road no he probably won't speak english but he will help you and i mean i'm not lying to you i was doing a video and a guy just walks up and gives this to me and said hey thanks for coming to normandy he gives this to me i mean you can't beat that the people here some of the best in france i'm not gonna lie to you anyway those are our five love and hates about coming to Normandy. What are some of yours? Put it in the comment section below so we can learn more. You got more tips on visiting Normandy? Put them down there too because we want to help more travelers because we can't do it all. We need your help as well. Anyway, if you want to learn more, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can subscribe to our channel. We have new travel videos every Wednesday and Saturday and a few other ones I'll throw in occasionally. If you want to learn more about Normandy, more information on what to eat and drink when you are here, top 10 sites to see in Normandy, all kinds of other stuff. Check us out our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram you know all that stuff like i said before and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions and i would say we hope you have a great time in normandy but you know what i know you will it's fantastic and thank you to all you that watch and subscribe and give us your support it means the world to us to help us do things like this to bring videos like this to you so thank you very much and have a great time and au revoir from normandy au revoir i'm gonna go have some cider now and maybe I'll call those kids have been a little crazy today. <laughs> Bye.